Hi, Jeremy. How are you? Good. Um, so, uh, Derek uh, is the CEO of TNT, which is a, uh, an, a professional networking site. Um, let's just uh, start with an introduction. What is it? What's different about it from other networking sites? What's the focus? So um, we we're already very familiar with uh, LinkedIn and uh, um, and essentially with the LinkedIn of China, to put it shortly. Um, and if you look at the development of s social networking services in in uh, China, the mic is back. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the development of um, social networking sites in China, people kind of uh, experience SNS as entertainment, as gaming. Um, and so uh, in, in, a, in a kind of lopsided way because of the way Kaixing was introduced and um, when people in China en masse experience so social network, it's in, in the gaming and entertainment uh, kind of mode. Um, so we we are um, everything about us is about p delivering value, specific value for career development, um, providing opportunities um, for car both career and business. And how do you see yourself against some of your competitors in China? Well, it's uh, it's interesting. It's a market where there's been no less than uh, twenty competitors that have come and many have gone on its own. Um, and primarily because people um, are trying to do it the way most Chinese internet um, uh, websites are built that's focusing on entertainment, focus on not really focusing on quality. So um, <clears throat> we've, um, we've been from the very start uh, very focused on quality users, valuable users, and um, and valuable information. So, for example, we <clears throat> we um, uh, we decided that in China we had to focus on the mid to upper middle level professionals. Okay, and uh, um, we uh, for the first year and a half we avoided any media attention, rejected any media interviews because we believe that it needs to be grown organically with, within a certain quality circle. And it so happened that a lot of our friends around us were graduates, alumni of uh, Beida and Tsinghua, the, the, the Harvard and, and Stanford's of China. And uh, <clears throat> so we were really um, uh, fortunate to really grow out of that circle and focus on qualities. and. Uh, Everyone knows in China, in, if you want big user numbers, you go to the schools, right? And we've really av avoided that because for professional network, if you have a lot of students on your site, there are value seekers. And who's gonna provide the value? And it's really in the middle chunk that are both value seekers and value providers. That's, that's really interesting. Uh, so many of our competitors have gone to the schools and have, gone, have targeted the easier young graduates, newly graduates, and um, have really suffered in, in terms of being able to build a quality um, uh, professional network that way. Can you share with us any, any numbers, user numbers, traffic? Sure. We, uh, we're now uh, six million users. Okay. Um, it's, um, it's interesting, it's, when you are thinking about China, you, you normally think about large numbers, right? Um, and we're six million and we're already the clear leader in China, okay? And um, uh, the, the key difference here, it's, um, a, a good analogy is e-commerce. China started, China started to have e-commerce companies maybe two years after the U.S., but e-commerce e has really not picked up until recent years, and, and also thanks to Taobao. Okay. So uh, I think there are certain categories. If the, 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 chi the history of Chinese internet development has been so youth and entertainment focused that if you bring certain models from the U.S. that fits that category, it grows like wildfire. But it's not within that category. I think 
on a cult cultural basis, it takes much longer for certain for these segments to grow up. Um, E-commerce is a good example, um, and professional so social network is another example. Uh, we believe that we've been doing a lot of mar market education, and um, we are at a very we're at the cusp of um, explosive growth at this point. What are your revenue models? Okay, <clears throat> um, essentially um, three, recruiting, advertising, and um, uh, user uh, subscription. So as you know, we are part of um, a group called the Ideal Group, um, which uh, we were acquired by the, the European group in, uh, in 2009. And uh, as a group, um, the, we've been profitable since um, September 2009. And the revenue growth has been really strong. Um, but the interesting part is that our revenue, um, over 50% of our re revenue mix comes from subscription. So. And uh, who, who are those people? Uh, what do you mean who are the, the, the subscribers? Uh, uh, the subscribers are typically um, uh, professionals, um, and this is mostly, I'm talking about the Europe, um, the subscription is done in the Europe markets, um, and uh, they are your average users, premium users, and it's, uh, we charge 650 um, euro per, um, per user. So um, unlike LinkedIn charging 25 to 200 uh, for their subscri uh, subscribers, um, this is, we are, we are really targeting um, users in a more mass level. Uh, so for example, our, our uh, conversion rate in Europe is 8%, while LinkedIn's conversion rate in terms of sub subscriber is more like 0.4%. They charge more for each uh, subscriber, but uh, we have a broader base of uh, subscribers. And is that being rolled out in China now? Um, we, are, we are very careful in uh, rolling out a subscription service in China. Um, partially in China, Chinese consumers um, are not used to paying for service, period, whether it's online or offline. And, um, uh, but we do believe that uh, uh, there's a real market. In, in the long run, we would be able to charge for real value um, online, and, um, but it's something that we want to work, start working on uh, next year. So this year, we're focusing on recruiting and advertising. Do you think there's uh, not a cultural difference in China compared to European or American markets with this type of website? <clears throat> it's something I've heard critics express before that because of you know, the famous Chinese concept of guanxi, which tends to be a real guanxi, somebody you actually know, preferably <clears throat> somebody you went to school with or have a long history with, that there's a sort of a cultural uh, predisposal to be a bit more suspicious of uh, networking websites for professional uh, ends? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, there are uh, a number of cultural nuances that makes um, providing the service different um, in China. Um, for example, um, I mean, the, what, what the kind of guanxi you are talking about, um, it's, it's true. Everybody knows guanxi is very important in China. Um, but in the old world, having two, three, five guanxi is sufficient. If your dad is the minister of, of, uh, of here and you, your, um, your college buddy is in the armory purchasing arm, then if you just stick with these guanxi, you're all set, right? Um, if you just wine and dine and karaoke all week, um, then you're okay. But now, when we look at um, a market-oriented economy and the kind of professionals that we are, we're um, uh, we're looking at the kind of guanxi that they are confronting is not a few people. If you anybody taking up a, uh, a mobile, it's usually typically 500 to 2,000 contacts. Okay, now 
how do you in in the newly new professional world how do you maintain relationships with a few hundred to a few thousand people you cannot do it the traditional way um, you cannot just stick to wine dine and karaoke um, so we really need a new set of tools new kind of platform to allow people to keep in touch um, with a broader base of relationships and be able to leverage on them. And I, I think this is where, where this, um, the professional network platform um, comes in. Okay, last question. Can you share with us any milestones or plans you have for the next couple of years? Yes, um, <clears throat> we're really seeing um, the whole professional social network um, space uh, as I mentioned before, at the edge of expl explosive growth. Um, just from our um, numbers, um, we were growing at 100,000 new users per month at the end of last year. In March, we were 130,000, now we're 200,000 per month. So we're really seeing a major ramp up. And I think part of the reason is that um, people who have, who, uh, who were introduced to the world of social networking through gaming, they, they stopped playing the games and, um, and they're asking, what's next? What else can I do on a social network? What kind of value can you provide us? And I think this, we're in a great position um, here where we're able to, um, because all we provide is value. Uh, for people uh, in their career, in their whole career development. Um, so we're very excited about um, the next one to two years. And um, it, we, our internal plans is to grow from 6 million to 10 million users by the end of the year. Uh, very aggressive. And um, I think um, this is uh, going to be a very exciting market for professional network moving forward. Okay. Derek, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.